Apple released a new AirPods beta update that's compatible with iOS 16 for AirPods 2, AirPods 3, AirPods Pro, and AirPods Max. Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to talk about what's new in this update and how to install it. Now you will need to be a developer as it is a developer beta, but we'll talk about what they've updated in it a little bit later. The first thing is the new version. The new version, once you install it, will bring you to version 5A282. You can check this on iOS 16. It's a little bit different than before as within settings, we have a new AirPod section. So if we connect our AirPods pro, you'll see them appear here. So give it just a moment. They're connected and you see it appears. If we go into that AirPods section, scroll down to the bottom, we can see our version or serial number model and what they are. So you can see the new version number is 5A282D. This particular update does bring some fixes for the most part and also requires you to be a developer. Now, in order to install this, it's similar to what you have to do if you're not a developer, but requires a few additional steps. So the first thing you need to know is if you're going to install the beta, you need to be a developer and have access to an iPhone running iOS 16 software, as well as a Mac running Mac OS 13 beta and Xcode 14. So you'll need Mac OS 13 Ventura, Xcode 14, and then of course the supported AirPods. So two, three pro and max. Once you've installed Xcode 14 beta, and it's a huge install over 10 gigabytes, then what you need to do is connect your AirPods to your iPhone. Once you've connected your AirPods to your iPhone, then go ahead and plug in your iPhone to your Mac. Once you plug in your iPhone to your Mac, you want to launch Xcode. Once you've launched Xcode on your Mac, then you'll have a new developer section under settings. So if you go under settings, scroll down, you'll see a new developer section that shows up under TV provider. It's below, below game center. So you'll see, it says developer tap on developer, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see a new option for AirPods testing pre-release beta firmware. Now they did this with iOS 15 last year, and we haven't had many betas since, but if we tap on this, we can select which AirPods get the beta update. So we can update some of them, all of them, or none of them. Now, once you turn this on, you can then install the update. Now, in order to get this developer section to show up, it actually wouldn't show up for me right away. So if you're having a problem doing that, you may want to turn on developer options. This is a new option under privacy and security on iOS 16. So under privacy and security, scroll down and you'll see developer mode turn on developer mode, you'll reboot, then connect it to your Mac again, if it's not showing up and you should get that developer settings option. So I had to do that in order for it to show up. I could not get it to show up otherwise. Now, after you've enabled all of that, what you need to do is make sure your AirPods are charged to about 50% or more, including the case and the AirPods, and then just put them next to your iPhone. Now, typically I've told others in the past, you can listen to music for about 30 seconds or more, then put them back in the case, put them next to your iPhone, close the case, lock the iPhone and walk away. That will update them pretty quickly. However, the fastest way, since you'll need a Mac anyway to enable that developer mode, is to plug in your AirPods to your Mac directly and then again walk away. It took all of five minutes and they were updated. So it was very quick to do and that seems to be the best and fastest way to do it. So as long as you have a Mac, plug them in and you can update. Unfortunately, there's no way to do this with Windows, so you need Xcode in order to do this. Once your AirPods are updated, and like I said before, you can check that by going into settings, going into your AirPods, scrolling to the bottom, and you'll see the version number change. Once they're updated, Apple says that they've improved automatic switching and it provided various bug fixes and stability fixes. You can see that here, it says this program also enables debugging of issues by Apple with on in log collection. And this release includes improvements to automatic switching and various bug and stability fixes. Now, what those bug instability fixes are is hard to say because, well, I just installed this, but so far it connects nice and fast. And I did try the switching. In fact, I went into music, listened to a song, listened to the song for a moment, paused it, went to my Mac with Mac OS Ventura, immediately went to music, clicked play, and they immediately were already working. There was no connection sound. Then I, I paused that song, went back to my iPhone, hit play, and it started playing here immediately. There was no reconnection sound whatsoever. It just worked. So maybe that's the update. It just seems to work. As soon as you pause music here, switch to your Mac, start a video or start music, it immediately switches. So that definitely seems to be an improvement.
Now, if you're wondering if you should install this update, I would recommend against it typically because there's no way to go back until the next update comes out. You can go back into that developer setting and then disable this having the beta. But other than that, there's no way to go back. So you would disable it by going into pre-release software under beta firmware, turning it off. And then when the next public version is released, they will allow you to go to that next version. There is no downgrading with AirPods. So potentially you could brick your AirPods where they wouldn't work anymore. So just keep that in mind. I typically wouldn't recommend trying this out unless you know what you're getting into. But if you have a pair of AirPods Pro and you wanna try it out, you're on iOS 16, you have a Mac with Xcode 14 and you're a developer, then definitely you could try it out. Otherwise, I would probably recommend against it. Of course, you can see there's log collection here as well if you want it to collect logs so you can see more information. And so that's everything with this particular update. Like I said, it's available for AirPods 2, 3, Pro, and Max. But again, unless you know what you're getting into, I probably wouldn't install it. Sound quality also seems to be the same, and so does noise cancellation. So whatever else they updated is hard to say. At this point, it's just stability issues, maybe connectivity issues, and then of course that automatic switching. If you found anything else new in this and you installed it, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.